you hungry, Fraulein? Mud, mud everywhere. Are you hungry, Fraulein? Mud, mud everywhere. All right, well, she told you, she tried to tell you. <laughs> uh, no, fortunately, we haven't experienced very bad weather, um, but we do find ourselves in a situation where we are operating by candlelight and oil lamp. Um, due to power outage. So um, we figured it would be a good time to at least, uh, well, it is a good time to slow down. Uh, your your evening is forced to adjourn early in the winter time with the shorter days. And so it makes for a good time to reflect and uh, on a number of things. For one, I think we slow down and I made the comment to you that I think the pioneers, you know, their days were shorter and or they, they did by the sunlight and they had the, the downtime to process through their thoughts. And so we just wanted to do some of that. So do you all ever allow yourself to reflect, um, you know, on things specifically, maybe past experiences or... Um, you know, things that perhaps we don't want to dwell on. Um, I think most of the time, you know, we try to avoid reflecting on things and we don't allow ourselves to, to perhaps dwell on circumstances or, um, you know, situations that we need to change. Yeah. Um. What's something that you have in mind? Well, I mean, just like this, I guess. You know, it's kind of like, are we fully prepared for extended power outage? Um, right. That's, uh, you know, that's where it's a good thing. Uh, obviously, it interrupts your plans. You know, you're getting ready to prepare dinner. You have no, um, there's no idea, no foreknowledge of what's going to happen. And, and then boom, you lose power. And uh, but it's a good thing because it tests us. Right. It's where the rubber meets the road, and uh, we recognize that um, you know with surges and things. So we've experienced that. We've uh, tried to experiment with solar power, and frankly, have seen a lot of hiccups uh, to where it has proven in our in our media, in our context at least, um, 
just not very durable. It, it's subject to the same things if you're grid tied at all. Um, it's a, all of the same electrical parts, and so it is prone to, I think, the same, same, uh, same sort of things, you know what I mean? I guess uh, characteristics that any electrical system would have. Um, and, you know, so we think, uh, what about our oil supply? What fuels are we using? Are we stocking up on the fuels? And um, just just thinking through all that, our what, what of our food storage, you know, would keep and for how long? Um, what about our water? You know, if you have, um, it really is a, a wonderful step as a homesteader. Maybe you have taken the step to drill a well so that you've got water on your property. If it's run by electricity, that well is not going to work beyond the pressure that you hold in a right. in a pressure tank. Um, so, um, so yeah, this is a good area, a good time it, for you to make a list and say what are those areas that, in the event of a power outage, and how does that differ from say a water a water break or something where you're out of water uh, do you have water uh, because every scenario is different but the irony is is that one one system outage can trigger an outage in other areas as well or shortages and things like that right well i mean i do think it's it's pretty vital i mean as part of you know being a homesteader you know thinking about where we're not preparing or where we've made mistakes yeah blind spots right yeah and so this is a great opportunity i think like you said to really sit down and make a list of things that you know we weren't prepared for for this time um that way if something you know extensive does happen um you know we've either got those those plans met or we have a backup um, well, in, and, and I think, too, you realize there, there are certain <clears throat> provisions that I think we make that can be unnecessary, that we realize that right. whenever, you know, things hit the fan, uh, you're, you don't need right. for your survival and your well-being. And so it helps you, I think, just to simplify, to say, okay. Just, you have to streamline it you, because you can't, I feel like you can't meet everything you know, um, but you have to focus on the, like the bare necessities when it comes to stuff like this, because I think you can do all the planning you want, but like I've, I've voiced before, um, do I think we can plan fully for an extended period? Perhaps not, you know, perhaps, you know, that's where you adapt. Um, so even now, uh, we would be, um, you know, thinking in those terms, you know, um, you know, this time of year, there's just a lot, you know, I think of food storage is immediately mm -hmm. if it was prolonged. Um, so, and, and I think what's good about this is I've said before, a lot of people look for alternative energy, but I think our use of energy has become so wasteful. And I've said like before, the only sustainable fuel sources like wood, um, it's wood or oils if you're able to render your own fats uh, for candles, oils, and waxes, things like that. But um, because otherwise, um, you know, you have to purchase. It, it's every other fuel source has made us a consumer. Right. And everywhere that you're a consumer <clears throat> is an area that there's a potential for breakdown or demand right. issues, supply Well, I think issue. that's always, like, my, my goal is to find something that I can use if something was to happen. That yeah. I'm not fully relying on something that I've bought. Yeah. But I've got, I've got something already um, in mind when yeah. that time comes. Yeah, so it's building, <laughs> building uh, a breakdown. You know, if you're in the survivalist camp, what you hear... Um, what you hear from people who discuss uh, extreme situations is they will talk about a an immediate like so having a kit that you keep on yourself for immediate first aid kit like an IFAC pack or something to where 
you can uh, assist yourself in an immediate situation where you are. Uh, then you can be in a situation where you need a, a small pack of a few items that you would call your get home bag where if you, you want to have those bare necessities that are going to keep you for a period of hours or days so that you might get home to where you've compiled your resources and then they have um, what some may call like a bug out bag and that's where you've made preparations you've packed a bag with your necessities where you can stay uh, you can if you maybe even have to leave home and and go to a place for an extended period of time in an extreme emergencies and as a homesteader um, you're kind of blurring those lines because we want our home to to be sustainable uh, or we're not in need of, of the bug out situation that that really becomes um, something of a of an apocalyptic nature if you would ever have to leave your home you know, this is kind of the hill you've chosen to die on I was just talking about you know as a survivalist you might have your immediate first aid you may have your get home bag and your bug out bag and how we're kind of blurring those lines in order to say what resources you steal your home is where you're going to compile those resources for staying in and suffering through and, and it's also where you're going to gather those resources in order to bug out if you got to head out. So so you're really looking, homesteading is planning for the extended stay right. and the sustainability for extended sustainability so that emergencies aren't so catastrophic or they don't constitute emergencies on your, on your behalf. So... Um, luckily for us, this isn't even an emergency, but it is, it's just a power outage. Um, and yet, we've talked about these things, and a simple power outage gives us that help to say, okay, so what of our systems are left functional, and uh, what are not? And what are the things, if something happened and this continued, um, would we have be, what would be our first concerns? Right, yeah. So, yeah, I definitely do believe it's important to um, think about these things, um, especially when we're not really, like you said, under a time of mer emergency, but a time of, well, what worked, what didn't, where where did I lapse, where, what void is there that I need to fill, <clears throat> and so. And I like, you know, you should like the tough pills to swallow because, um, you know, I think it's pressed like so this it limits it limits our our time during the day it limits our time for research and time for all of the busyness so i think it just kind of also just on my mind you say reflecting but it's even sort of personal reflection right to yeah. think about how we need to be careful that we're diligent during the day mm -hmm. and that we use our hours wisely and that we take our rest seriously you know, well, I think the only when, time we can really do that is when we slow down, right? And and so when we when we slow down, we not only can think and reflect, but we're not making as many mistakes. Um, we're allowing ourselves to. It, it's 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 almost like. Um, working on ourself almost, you know, right. where have I fallen short? What do I need to change? Where do, what can I help in so, this, to, to meet the solution? Yeah. Right? So you walk it back and just say, you know, you need, you need fire. You need fire for light. You need fire for heat. Um, you can back up with electricity. Uh, what, what things will, uh, hinder your electric, your use of electric, you know, power surges, EMPs, um, breakers, faulty equipment, uh, lack of sunlight, which has been an issue. We haven't had sunlight. We've had more cloud coverage. It's been um, just dark and gloomy uh, for an extended period of time uh, during the winter. And um, so you walk it back and to say, so what are those alternatives? You know, you have fire, well, oil, and then how much 
you have in, in the way of oil storage for your lamps or fat storage? Um, or have you rendered the fat? You know, we talk about meat and things for food a lot of times, but do you, do you actually have the good fat stores for fuel? Um, uh, wood, even if you want wood, are you intending to cut all, you have gas, gasoline, or a tractor or something to split your wood, or, or do you have a means... What if, what if the fuel out there runs short, then uh, what about manual tools? Uh, have you allowed yourself the, light, the time to do those things? What would your day look like if well, your chores weren't completed you had to manually well, cut all your wood? Well, and a lot of that is based on building skill, right, which well, takes time. I was just going to say, so you, got, you need the physical time. It's going to take longer. If we walk that back and to think, well, we're not, if we don't have gasoline or oil for our chainsaw or or, you know, for our tractor, then um, what will I need? Well, saws, malls, uh, things like that. But then also, yeah, the skill, some of the skill set, and the physical capability. God, that's, you know, these are the hard pills to swallow when you understand that I'm not fit to do what's necessary. And so try it out. You know, we have a, a thing. We often uh, live in our younger years and I just, I know I'm, I'm aware of that. If I step away from any physical activity and then if I got to do something physical and I realize like, man, that's a lot of strain, you know, on my shoulder or this side or the other. And I think, and I realize that I'm, I'm out of, out of practice. I'm out of, uh, out of shape. And so, uh, that's what you got to think of. All that's important is for us to, to keep ourselves physically, mentally, uh, spiritually fit, um, and you know for all these sort of things well it's really like you said you know working with your hands and and having these skills and stuff um you know when i'm working that's what my mind automatically goes to is i'm i go to reflecting automatically and and it's almost um like a like a natural a natural transition when I, you know, begin my work in the garden or I'm doing housework or, um, you know, anything outside, you know, it's just, I start thinking about, um, what, what are my shortcomings? Where are things falling short? Where do I need to make ends meet or what have you? Yeah. You know so, what I mean? And it's, it's not all bad, it's, but it is, this is the good, this is what separates the men from the boys, so to speak, and when um, you're being effective, is just stepping back, and, and a bit, whether you're building teams, you're working with people, or you're working in the garden to say, what are areas where we've glowed, or what that we've, areas that we've uh, really excelled and done well, and what are our strengths, what can we build upon, how can we leverage our strengths uh, in, in light of our weaknesses. And then what are the areas we need to grow in? Right. So how can we benefit? Um, you know, when, uh, I think Washington, what was it? Whenever he was, uh, asked about his failures, he, he's or one, I don't remember which battle, but he said, you know, we shall better know how to handle them next time. Right. Exactly. And yeah. so learning that, uh, you know, we had that discussion, you know, with Jaden, if you saw that, uh, did our little initiation thing, and, and, and part of our discussion was that, you know, part of being mature is not getting it right, it's not being perfect, but it's failing well. Never, never allowing a mistake to, uh, to not teach us something, right. to not grow us, to not learn from our mistakes. Um, and so that we don't make those mistakes again. If you make the mistakes again, then it is damaging. It could be costly uh, to life and happiness, you know. So, um, so yeah, we certainly want to evaluate ourselves as difficult as that would be and encourage it ourselves. Is. I mean, it is difficult in where, some circumstances. Yeah, I mean, you got to, you got to, you know, bite the bullet and, and, uh, and then find out as well where you can leverage your strengths. I think you need to you need to make note of your strengths where you do well because you have to leverage that and understand how can you what what of our systems what of our household functions the best, uh, and there's ways in which 
um, you can leverage that. And uh, I think your imagination can really get a hold of you in that regard. Well, I hope you all take time to reflect, um, take time to prepare, to think about um, some things that perhaps you need to change or prepare for that you are, you know, not only thinking on the material things, but also regarding yourself. Things um, you need to study, mm -hmm. kits you need to put together, um, skills, skills, things you need to sit down and learn, and uh, or things you need to practice, or just the way your your daily routine should change. Yeah, you know. And I think we always should make a make a habit of reflecting. Absolutely. So. I think that's about it for yeah. tonight. So we're going to enjoy our, the early night the Lord has given us, hopefully. And uh, and so we will uh, share this with you uh, as soon as the power uh, allows us to. You know, we've uh, hindered, it's hindered some signal and uh, things. And so it, it seems to be covering uh, all of our town. And uh, so anyway, we'll see you all another time.